This is a patient with Labor's congenital amaurosis whose lens is dislocated into the anterior chamber. She has severe keratoconus, a very thin cornea, and posterior polymorphous dystrophy with snail tracks running through the center of the cornea shown in red bracket. We decided to go ahead and phaco this lens in the anterior chamber. Uh, we're not going to place an implant uh, given that she has a very steep cornea and a very long axial length and very poor visual potential because of her labors. Now, I saw her right before uh, the pandemic uh, struck, and we had scheduled her for surgery, but we had to delay the surgery for a couple of months. So the lens has been sitting in the anterior chamber for three months. Uh, here I've made some paracentesis, and I'm trying to inject this coat to isolate the lens away from the back of the cornea, but I'm having difficulty mobilizing the lens and pushing back away from the back of the cornea endothelium for some reason. So I'm going to make my clear cornea incision here. And I'm doing this very carefully because her cornea is very thin because of her severe keratoconus. Here again, I'm going to place some dispersive viscoelastic between the lens and the cornea endothelium. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and put our phaco tip in the anterior chamber. And my goal here is going to be to phaco this lens without having any pieces fall through the pupil uh, to try to avoid damaging the iris and to avoid any damage to the cornea. So here I'm using a cyclodialysis spatula to uh, support the lens as I start to phaco. This is a very dense cataract. Uh, I'm going to try to keep the lens in one piece so that pieces do not fall through the pupil. And I'm going to try to keep the phaco tip embedded within the lens nucleus so that energy is not being transmitted to the cornea endothelium, but is blunted by the uh, nucleus material itself. So I'll use no phaco power until I engage the nucleus, and then I will try to keep the nucleus at the tip of the phaco and support it with my cyclodialysis spatula and try to keep everything as much as I can. Uh, in one piece to avoid having fragments fall posterior. Here I'm going to remove the cyclodialysis spatula and add more dispersive viscoelastic to support the nucleus and to protect the back of the cornea. Uh, you can see the uh, snail tracks running through the center of the cornea here. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more viscoelastic on top of the lens nucleus to isolate it. So there's viscoelastic under the nucleus and above the nucleus. Um, I'm trying to isolate this uh, as much as I can away from the back of the cornea, away from the iris. So here again, I'm going to re-enter the phaco tip, try to keep the iris back as I phaco so it doesn't get damaged, uh, engage the nucleus, and phaco only once the nucleus has been engaged. So again, I'm not transmitting ultrasound so much to the cornea endothelium. I have the uh, phacal power quite high here because this is uh, really quite a dense cataract. And I'm just taking my time and sort of cartwheeling the nucleus so that the outside, which is less dense, is phacoing toward the center. And then the uh, central nucleus is cartwheeled into the phaco tip. And it's a nice technique if you ever do have to phaco lens material in the anterior chamber and you don't have a posterior capsule. Here the whole nucleus, the whole lens is in the anterior chamber, lens capsule and all. So there is nothing but anterior hyloid between the iris. So here we pretty much completed the phaco. We're going to gather all these little chips. And you can see once again the uh, snail tracks running through the center of the cornea. But there is also lens capsule that is adherent to the back of a cornea. And it appears that the uh, lens fused to the cornea endothelium during the three-month period that it was sitting in the anterior chamber. And that, no doubt, is why I was having so much difficulty creating separation between the lens and the back of the cornea with viscoelastic at the beginning of the case. So here I'm trying to remove this lens capsule material from the back of the cornea, and you can see it's pretty firmly adherent. So I'm using the uh, irrigation aspiration with high aspiration, and I'm trying to pull this 
anterior lens capsule away from the uh, back of the cornea where it seems to be stuck. And uh, I'm finally able to mobilize this and uh, pull it out of the eye. We're now going to inject dilute triescence to check for any vitreous that might be in the anterior chamber. And there appears to be no vitreous. Uh, we're going to uh, check the wound. There's no leakage and the case is completed. Thank you for your attention.